so here we are again in Steve's field, yet again in Steve's field. I can see this crop's a much, much taller than it was a week ago. And we're gonna try a dual battery mission with drone deploy. I've not done it before, so I've got the instructions on the tablet. I'm briefing myself yet again before I fly and um, fingers crossed it worked. But I think I think we stand a good chance of, uh, of capturing uh, the, the plants this time. And then hopefully they'll tell us how many plants there are per row, how many have propped out of the ground. And that's important for the farmer to know because the seed seller has guaranteed him a given rate of um, plant coming up out of the ground. And if that doesn't happen, he can get money back on the seed. Um, so it's quite an important number for the farmer to know. Um, I'm not convinced this, this sort of software really works. That's why I'm trying it. And I'm very lucky that I, I live in the countryside and it feels like this all around. So this is one of the things we can test. And we can do it with the Phantom 3 Professional because um, this is one of the only agricultural uses that doesn't require NDVI cameras or fancy sensors um, to get it done. You can do it with the, with the standard camera. So again, it's, it's, I'm interested to know what a farmer could do if he just bought a P3P for himself. Park the regulations in whichever country you are. What could you do if you had a Phantom for your own farm? This is where the Phantom 4 will be fantastic because um, you'll be able to see the screen a lot easier. Right, so there we are. So I'm just, before I go, I'm just reviewing my flight plan. I've looked at it at home, but I'm aware, I'm just in my head to be aware of what it's going to do and where I expect to see the thing go now um, uh, on, on the real ground. 22 meters height, which should give us a resolution of about one centimeter a pixel, but the field drops away down over into the distance. So in actual fact, it'll be 22 meters above this point and down over there, it'll be X meters higher. So the resolution will get lower down there. Um, I'm expecting a battery swap, we've briefed for that, so I'm happy I'm good to go. Also, all this waffle and faff that I'm doing now, not rushing into the air, is giving the GPS longer to do its thing, and I'm always happy with that. Now, what the great thing I like about Drone Deploy is the, is the, um, it's a pre-flight checklist. So, I've armed it now, or not armed it, I've asked it to fly. It's checking its points, it's going to upload the waypoints, and then it's telling me it's good to go, and we'll, and we'll go. Do you remember when we were still messing around with APM 1s and 2s? And Very much, and even before It took a that. whole day to integrate and <laughs> before getting to launch. Now it's just... I know. It's, it's ridiculous. To all practical purposes, it's magic, and that's how um, technology should appear. To people that are just coming into this, they'll, they'll expect this as the, as the minimum standard. But to be able to just... Okay, a little bit of thought beforehand for the flight plan, and then put it on my phone and come here and, and fly off the... Uh, or automatically hit a button and it goes, does all the checks for me. It blows my mind every time. I know it shouldn't, I know I should expect it, but it's amazing. Now I'm I'm not annoyed, but can you see the lights change? The sun's coming out. Now that's going to make a difference to the shots. It's better in some ways, because already, even just stood here, I can see the green is greener, um, but it's going to change the consistency of the shots. So blast, there's a bit of a gap there. I'd rather it was all grey or completely bright, but not in and out with the light. All right, so with the farmer, what information does he think, well, does he currently have? What does he think his crops are well, doing what, what before he'll flying do, with the drone? What he does, in fact, what he did this the first time I tried this, he was, he was doing what the farmer would do, and he just walks down a few rows and clicks and counts the number of plants that have come through. And he's looking for about uh, 8,000 a hectare, I think he told me. I could be wrong there. But um, what he's finding, what, what his biggest issue here is actually porcupines are coming in and trashing the, the plants. So he'd like this software to be able to detect porcupine holes for two reasons. One, to go and clop that porcupine. And second, because of course, it's not only just that hole going in, but they've made a great big nest under the ground. and. Um, when a tractor goes over it, they collapse and down goes the tractor. So he wants to be able to remove the porcupine holes, which is quite enough. I don't see any, any software for that at the moment, porcupine hole removal. But what's interesting is, of course, Gene looks for shallow graves uh, in America with RPA, and he's the expert for that. And to all intents and purposes, I would have thought that drop in the ground is a similar sort of thing. 
So porcupines, that's his biggest worry in here at the moment. And he reckons last year he lost five hectares to, to porcupine damage. Okay, so I'm thinking about the second flight now. I get nervous when I'm flying, when the battery goes below 30%. I don't like to go below 30%. So 33% and it's going away from us now. What I'm going to let it do is do the, the diagonal coming back to us. And as soon as, because um, <clears throat> then it's, it's doing work as it comes back. And as it's about to complete that diagonal, I'm going to hit the home button on the app and get it to come back. And that should, should give me some 20 something percent battery on the return leg. Give me plenty of time to land just in case something happens, anything could happen, you know. Um, it's unlikely in a big wide open area. And I could ditch it anywhere, of course. Um, but especially if you're in a confined place or something like that, you want to give yourself plenty of time to fap around for the landing and missed approaches, if you will. Um, you, you really shouldn't run it right down to the end of the battery and hope that it's going to be enough. There's no such thing as that in aviation. Bring it home early and give it, oh, there we go. There's the battery warning. So that's 30%. It's on its way back. I'll let it come up this leg. This is going to be like watching paint dry. Right, so in theory, we'll take that out. see it's put a dotted line of the flight that it's already done and so I'm gonna, it's gonna hit go it'll go through the pre-flight checks again uh, walla 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 now it's uploading the waypoints and as soon as I say it's okay I'll send it off again and hopefully it'll head off back down there right here we are we're cleared to take off so we just press the tick oh it's super easy should stand back about it's too, too close then so there it goes now yeah there yes it's drawing a line. Actually, I didn't need to, I shouldn't have brought it back on that leg because it's going down to the, to the other one. But anyway, yes, it's going to complete the mission. Tickety-boo. Oh, well, it's good as far as to tell. The proof will be in the pudding when we, when we process all the images. We've landed back on with probably, um, well, just a little over 600 images. Oh, I've gone away from that to see see how much it was then. Well, that was that was 352 images then, and I can't remember. We did say at the end of the first one what it did. So these all get taken off the SD card, chucked into a computer, thrown up onto the cloud, and then some software elves do the magic um, wherever they are. They're probably busy at Christmas now, but so the software elves will do it. Really the only big problem, and the problem solved by the Phantom 4 Pro is, is seeing, my, seeing my phone now. Um, the Phantom 4 Pro has the promise of that inbuilt screen that's um, very bright in daylight. So that alone is a reason to change, I think. Um, before that came out, the Phantom 3 Professional would have might have been my recommendation for this Christmas. Um, but I think, I think the Phantom 4 Pro is now. 30 minutes of flight time, so that flight we just did with two batteries, we could have done it in one battery. And quite simply, the much, much better sensor is going to be getting more, more light in, better light, better light, if there could be such a thing, but a better image. And more is more when you're capturing data. Um, there is no doubt about that. The sharper quality, less vibration, and the better off you are. So the Phantom 4 Pro now, I think, is, is pretty high on my uh, wish list. Okay, so outwardly, the, the first results were quite encouraging. You can see the plants quite nicely, and I thought, oh, tickety-boo. But then we zoom out on this double flight, and you can see the action or the reaction the happening of the the dappled light there's the flight tracks in diagonals of when the light was better and worse it's created quite a contrast but more than that if you have a look at the top of the field 1407 up here that's about where we actually we take off halfway down but then down the bottom look 1384 so that's over over 20 meters difference between the top and bottom of the field so it's no wonder we're not getting the resolution I need so there's my call I need terrain following and you see the map didn't cope with the top corner very well either so that's a great disappointment 
great disappointment. But there we are. We know what we need to do, and let's try and keep doing it.